Hello everybody, this is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics for 5 minutes of your time and get you to the divine. Today we're going to talk about the Scala Santa or the holy steps that you can see in Rome and how Jesus Christ repeatedly walked up these steps and how it's a big pilgrimage site now. Now before we begin, let's start with a prayer. Nomen Patris et Filia et Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filia et Spiritui Sancto. Secuturam Principio et Nucleat Semper et Seculi Seculorum. So as you can see, I'm recording in my office. That means two things. One, it's very early in the morning because I'm trying to get my videos done before my kids wake up. And number two, I'm back from my trip to Rome and Istanbul. When I was in Rome, I saw the Scala Santa. So if you're not familiar with this, this church is right across from St. John Lateran, which is the biggest of the four major churches of Rome. I mentioned them in the video in one of the previous videos I did in Rome. So the Scala Santa or the Holy Stairs are stairs that Jesus and this is small tradition this is not big tradition you don't as a catholic have to believe that this is true but it's small t tradition these are the steps that were in pontius pilate's palace and these 28 steps were the steps that jesus ascended and descended after he had his conversation uh, with pontius pilate and so these steps are perceived to be very holy and have been a pilgrimage site for centuries how did they get to rome well Constantine's mother, St. Helena, was a devout Christian. Even when he was not a devout Christian, he legalized Christianity, but he didn't get baptized till his deathbed. And in fact, he had bishops and priests always walking around him because he wanted to hedge his bets. And apparently it worked out because he was baptized right before he died. She went to the Holy Land, and as we talked about in the episode on the, the, the True Cross, uh, the, the, the Christians down there, and this is you know 325 AD, so it's been 300 years since Christ's death, more or less. The early Christians had kept all these things. Um, they knew where Christ was crucified. I mean, even now today, of course, we know this. And so they kept a lot of these things. And so she brought the steps from the palace and had them shipped, not as an intact stairwell, obviously, but had them shipped uh, back to Rome. And in fact, they were in uh, the Lateran Palace, which was the palace of the Pope's uh, for about a thousand years after Constantine legalized Christianity, uh, he gave them one of his palaces, the Lateran Palace, and uh, they, 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 he also donated the future church, it was a basilica, and, and, then, we, and then the Catholic Church made it St. John uh, Basilica. It was actually the Lateran family who owned it and they bequeathed it to the church. And so you had the, 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 the St. John Lateran Church, which is the official church of, of the Pope. And, and then next to it was the palace where the Popes lived. And so the stairs were installed there after St. Helena brought them back. And they were eventually moved in the 1500s, because at that point the Pope had moved to the Vatican as his residence, and, and the palace, the Lateran Palace, was, was crumbling. So he decided to move the steps to a nearby church that's across the street. And this was in the 1500s, and then the, the stairs were then installed there. So if you go there, um, the place is open every day. I think they do close for a few hours. Uh, like from one to three, but you can go there. And the, and the tradition is you kneel and you crawl up the steps. And uh, I've done it twice. I was there in 2016, and of course I just went back in 2024, early 2024. And so when you go there, you're gonna see people on their knees. And every, every devotion is different. Some people do like a, uh, they're doing the, the rosary. And so it's, since it's 28 steps, depending on how you do it, it's almost half of your rosary. Some people, if it's not that crowded, will we'll do an entire decade on a step. And let me tell you, they, they've, they've put wood over it uh, because of the wear and tear of the actual marble that was there. But you can actually see, they have like little holes of it. You can see it. See it. And back in 2019, when they were doing renovation, they removed the wood and so people could kneel and actually uh, see the marble. But then they put it back over just for protection for future pilgrims, right? Because you don't want this wear and tear too much. And you look at like St. Peter's Basilica, there's that great statue, uh, I believe it's St. Peter, where people for centuries have been touching his foot, and so now his foot's pretty much gone for centuries of people just touching it. So, you know, understandably so, they want to protect this thing. And so when you're on it, you're kneeling. And let me tell you, this, it hurts. It does hurt. And I think one of the reasons uh, people do it, and I, I went on this trip with somebody, they're like, why would I want to be in pain going up this, these steps and knees, and, and on my knees? And I think it just kind of goes to the Catholic idea of, of kind of suffering, redemptive suffering, and more importantly, just being closer to Christ. You know, if you ever go to the Holy Land, um, at least in the Orthodox and Catholic traditions, we know where the Garden of Gethsemane is. You can still go there. We know uh, where obviously Golgotha is. There's a church that was built where Jesus was born, in the cave he was born. There's a, obviously a church of his 
uh, of, his, of his, his cave where he was buried, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. You can go up to the Sea of Galilee and see where he did the Sermon on the Mount and the Sermon on the Plain, where the, the pigs that he, he put the demons in went over the cliff. I mean, the, the list goes on and on of all these holy sites that you can go to that we know where they're at. And so it's like one of these things, like with the steps, like this gets you closer to Christ because you can actually touch the steps that Christ touched. And not everybody in the world can do this, right? So not everybody can go to Jerusalem. It's easier for some people to go to Rome. So you can do this. And so let me tell you, it, it's it's painful. So when you're up there, it's kind of just like, it's it's so like human nature in many ways. But when you're going up these steps, there's probably enough room for like five people in a way. And you kind of, depending on how much of the self-flagellation pain you want on your knees, you kind of want to go behind somebody who's going pretty fast. But the second time I did it, this and this year, I was behind this African gentleman. He was so slow. And so I, I was like, oh my God, I've done my two decades. My knees are killing me. Can you please work your way up? And it's such human nature because like you want to do this. I wanted to do it. And of course, they have staircases on either side that you can walk up to the top if you want. So you don't have to do the knee. But part of you is like just so human nature. It's like you, you almost like want to, it's like it's like traffic. It's like passing lanes. Like if the guy in front of you is going too slow, you want to move over to the side and then go a little faster and go around him. And then I don't know it's just human nature. But if you ever go to Rome, the Scala Santa, you can look it up. Uh, it's in a church that's not far from uh, St. John Lateran, which is maybe a 15 minute walk from the Colosseum. So it's in the heart of Rome. So go check it out and post in the comments if you've ever been there. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray. Mm-hmm.